Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Pastor JD at New Life Church, and we're glad that you're part of the service. We are looking forward to God doing some great things this evening. And so we invite you to join us for service at six o'clock on Sunday evening. And we're gonna go into the service now and see what God has for us. I'll be back just after the service for a few closing comments. Are we raptured before the tribulation, or do we need to go? Do we go through the tribulation? The church is under the scripture is absolutely overwhelming that we are not here during the tribulation. The tribulation is the wrath of God, and some people say, "Well, the church has always had tribulation. Why should we escape that?" This tribulation here is from man and the enemy. That is the wrath of God. The great tribulation period. It says the wrath of His indignation poured out without mercy. And you can read the story, and, uh, uh, and let me just kind of review. After Revelation chapter 3, you cannot find the word church in the book of Revelation. It simply is not there. It simply is not there. Until the story is all over, then at the end of chapter 22, he gives the church a warning to be ready because he's coming as a thief. Uh, you cannot find the church. The promise to the church at Thyatira. There were those in the church at Thyatira practicing idolatry. And he said, I will throw you into great tribulation. But the rest who don't have this doctrine, hold fast till I come. In other words, they're not going to be in the tribulation. The promise of the church at Philadelphia, because you have kept the word of my endurance, I will keep you out of that hour. Now, he's not saying I'm taking you out of the middle of it. He's not saying I'm protecting you from the evil. He says I'm keeping you out of the hour. Hours measure time. I'm keeping you out of that time. And the church is in heaven in Revelation chapter 4 and 5. You have redeemed us by your blood out of every kindred, tongue, tribe, and nation. You have made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign upon the earth. And the great tribulation begins in Revelation 6-1 with the appearance of the man of sin. You cannot find the church during the tribulation period. There are some people so determined that the church is going to go through the tribulation, they take the 144,000 of the 12 tribes of Israel to be the church. And when the Bible says 144,000 of the 12 tribes of Israel, what does it mean? It means 144,000 of the 12 tribes of Israel. People say, well, we're spiritual Israel. Which tribe are you in? No. That's 144, that's the preservation of Israel he's talking about. You cannot find the church in the tribulation. We're not there. And Jesus said that we would be kept from that hour. Okay, he will keep you out of that hour that's coming to test all them that dwell on the earth. Luke Amen. says, as it was in the days of Lot, it'll be in the days when Jesus comes back. back. What the days of Lot? I can't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah till you've gone out of it. And the scripture is absolutely overwhelming. It's preconceived ideas that make people think the church is going through the tribulation. And, uh, because, but again, he says, I will keep you out of that time. He doesn't say, I'm keeping you from the difficulty. I'm keeping you out of that hour. He uses the Greek phrase, tereo ek. Okay? Uh, he uses that in the Gospels where he says, Father, he's talking about you want the apostles to go in all the world and preach the gospel. So I'm not saying you'll take them out of the world but keep them out of the evil, tereo ek. And he says, here, I'm keeping you out of that hour, tereo ek. And so the promise is overwhelming. The great tribulation has to do with Israel primarily. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble, but the time of publishing the, punishing the nations of the world for the rejection of Jesus Christ. You can't find the church. In, in, and you look at the outline of the book of Revelation. Jesus himself gives the outline. John has seen this magnificent vision of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus says, write the things that you have seen. All he's seen to that point was the vision of Jesus. Write the things that are. That's the letters to the seven churches, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamon, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And write the things that must take place after these things. After what? Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamon, Thyatira, Sardis, and Philadelphia. Chapter 4, 1 starts out, after these things, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And that first voice which I had heard, the one that said, I am Alpha and Omega, says, now come up here and I'll show you the things that must take place after these things. After what things? 
Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. The church is gone. It's not there after chapter 3. Amen. Doesn't that give us a... Well, I love that. Great question. Yes, Daryl. If they are... The backslider, if he's away from God, it's like the prodigal. My son was dead, and he's alive again. The backslider is dead if he's walked away from Jesus. He knows he can come back, but he's dead. That's, that's what he said to the prodigal son. This my son was dead. And if they've known Christ and walked away, they're not going. And now the weakest Christian is going. Christ is not coming back for part of his body. He's coming back for the whole body. Amen. The Bible says those that are Christ's at his parousia. So you may be a struggling Christian. You may be a, a having difficulty. You may be going through a hard time. You may be fighting temptation real hard. You may have failed God a few times. If, as long as Jesus Christ is in your heart, you're going up when the rapture takes place. If some people say, well, you got to be an overcomer. But what's an overcomer? Let me give you another phrase. The best interpreter of the Bible is the Bible. Say that with me. The best interpreter of the Bible is the Bible. And so I've heard people say, well, you've got to be an overcoming, or, or is this that some kind of spiritual elite? First John says this, chapter 5, Who is he that overcomes the world but he that believes that Jesus is the Christ? The believer is the overcomer according to the Bible. Turn to the person next to you and say, good evening, overcomer. Good evening, overcomer. <laughs> Amen. I love that. That's like the woman in chapter 12 of Revelation. I saw a woman with the 12 stars and the sun and the moon. Oh, woman with the sun, moon, 12 stars. I've read all kinds of weird explanations of that. I actually had a lady come to me one time, Pastor, and she said, did you see that woman in chapter 12 of Revelation, Pastor? She said, I said, yes. She said, that's my ministry he's talking about, <laughs> meaning herself. <laughs> no, 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 no. Every scholarly book I have read, and I've read between 150 and 200 books. Now, some of them are just plain, what do I want to say, dingy? <laughs> but every scholarly book, regardless of whether we agreed on the other things or not, so where do you find the sun, the moon, the 12 stars? The Bible is its own best interpreter. The only other place you find it is where Jacob had a dream, and Joseph had a dream, and he said, the sun, the moon, the 11 stars, bow down to my star. And Jacob, said, who was Israel, said, shall I and your mother and your brothers bow down to you, explaining that represents Israel. So it's Israel in Revelation chapter 12 that's preserved for three and a half years from the Antichrist. And Daniel 12 says the same thing. But let the Bible interpret itself. Every symbol in the book of Revelation is interpreted for us somewhere in the Bible. You don't have to make something up. Okay? Amen. Amen. It's important to read it. Yes, Pat. So in the Bible, when it speaks that a deacon should be the husband of one wife, and we say that a woman can serve in those roles, right. how do we get... Because, because any explanation giving details, the, the nature of Indo-European language, English is one, it isn't as bad as French and Greek, but any explanation of an office that can be held by both men or women, always is used in the masculine sense to explain it. That's the nature of the language. That, that's always been the nature of Indo-European languages. Uh, Asian languages are not that way, but Indo-European languages are, and Greek and French are the same thing. And so he can be talking about men and women. Uh, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. How many of you women are new creatures in Christ? Say amen. That is the very nature of the language itself. The Bible didn't create the language. The Bible used the language that was available and the culture that was available to express it. So when he says a deacon, the husband of one wife, but, 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 but then you, you, you go down to the next phrase, and our English Bible unfortunately says, likewise their wives, right? Likewise their wives must be grave, Okay. The Greek text says, likewise the women. doesn't say likewise. 
There is no possessive pronoun there. It, and the Greek word is like French. In French, femme can mean woman or wife, depending on the context. But it says, likewise the women, meaning women deacons. Likewise the women. It doesn't say their wives in the original. Likewise the women. And also, when you read Romans chapter 16, in our English Bible, Phoebe is called a servant of the church at Centria. Paul uses the masculine form of the word deacon, diakonos, meaning Phoebe is a deacon. He doesn't say deaconess. He doesn't use the feminine ending. He uses the masculine ending. Phoebe was a deacon of the church at Centria, Romans chapter 16. Then he goes on a little further and says, Salute Andronicus and Junia, my relatives who were in Christ before me, who were noteworthy among the apostles. And that Greek phrase means among all those that are called apostles, Andronicus and Junia are especially noteworthy. There was never a man in the Roman Empire named Junia. That'd be worse than a boy named Sue. <laughs> a woman apostle and a woman deacon in Romans chapter 16. God can use women anywhere he wants to use women. Anywhere. And again, that phrase in Timothy says, likewise the women. Amen. Amen. What's that? <laughs> Amen. Amen. I've, 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 I've had great women in my life, so I've, I'm, I'm married to one of them. So anyone else got a question? Uh, Greg. <laughs> That's the word usurp, usurp. That's what I was talking about before because these women were teaching false doctrine in the church at Ephesus and they were thereby usurping Timothy's authority as pastor. But if God appoints a woman as pastor, she's not usurping somebody's authority. The key word there is usurp. They were usurping Timothy's authority. Uh, the Bible mentions uh, oh, the two teachers of Apollos, uh, Who did I tell you I think wrote the book of Hebrews earlier today? Your, your mind's blank, too. It is. Uh, we just talked about this today. When you're put on the spot, you can't think of the name. <laughs> can't think of the name. That's called the Trinity of Mind. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're having it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's got no excuse for it. I got an excuse. <laughs> I'll think of it in a little yeah, bit. So come, will you. It'll, it'll, come, it'll come, come back to us. But... Uh, this lady and her husband are both mentors as teachers of Apollos. They're mentioned four times in the New Testament. She's mentioned first. Meaning what? She was the better teacher of the two. She was the better teacher of the two. And the two of them were the teacher of Apollos. The key word there in Timothy is usurp. And that's why you have to, it, uh, that's why you have to look at the whole letter and see what Paul's talking about. But it was a, it was a situation that Paul left Timothy there to deal with. Uh, and to get straightened out, okay? Oh, I've got Andronicus and Junia in my mind, and I can't get the other name. Oh, Priscilla, Aquila and Priscilla. Oh, okay. And then Priscilla's mentioned twice first, which was unheard of in that culture. And many of the, uh, uh, some of the earliest church authorities believe that the book of Hebrews, okay, was written by Priscilla. Book of Hebrews. There's an, you notice there's no name in the book. No name in the book at Saul. And when they were fixing up the canon of Scripture, which is, which is what this is made by, they were having, looking at this Bible and this one and this one and this one. I know your English Bible says the epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Hebrews. Paul did not write Hebrews. I can give you several reasons. Let me explain them. First of all, the author of the book of Hebrews says we got the gospel from those that heard it from Christ. Paul says in Galatians, I didn't get the gospel from anybody. I got it by direct revelation from Jesus Christ. Secondly, it is not Paul's Greek. Paul's Greek is street Greek, common Greek. The book of Hebrews is almost classical Greek. It's the highest level of classical Greek in the New Testament. And the reason it says the epistle of Paul, when they were putting the scriptures together, uh, the church councils and praying and seeking God. Some of them didn't want the book of Hebrews in there because there was no name on it. 
in order to protect it. A man by the name of Clement listed it under the epistles of Paul. He listed it under the epistles of Paul just to protect it from the people that didn't want it in Scripture because he knew it was Scripture. And he admits in his writings he knows that Paul didn't write it, but he put it that way to protect it so we would still have it today. And a lot of the early church writers said they thought Priscilla wrote it. That's why there was no name on it. It wouldn't have been accepted having been written by a woman in that culture. So there's no name in it who the author is. Paul always put his name in his letters. Amen. Always put his name in his letters. Are y'all, still, are y'all still here? Are you thinking? <laughs> Am I jarring some of your traditions? Amen. You know what I tell pastors when I teach overseas? I... Uh, I always ask them, what's the first song in Fiddler on the Roof? Tradition. And I say, I'm going to challenge all of your traditions, whether they're biblical or tradition only. And the last day when I walked into the class at Samoa, I had, had about 40 pastors in there. They all stood up and hollered tradition. <laughs> <laughs> but what I tell them is, when I was born, my mother had uremic poisoning. And the doctor came out and asked my, asked my dad, do you want to save your wife or your baby? Well, naturally, my dad said my wife. Well, God had a plan for both of us, and I'm still here. And then when I was 10 years old, I, I got gassed with carbon monoxide. And the Detroit Rescue Squad worked on me all night and all day. They told my parents we lost him over 100 times, and they kept bringing me back. But God had a plan for my life. But they tell you uh, carbon monoxide poisoning gives you permanent brain damage, so that explains my theology. <laughs> Carolyn, did you have a question? Oh, Jerry. Yeah, renewed is a better translation because the key word that Peter says is wherein dwells righteousness. And the Bible in the book of Psalms says that God abides, this earth abides forever. God, but it'll be a changed earth, but it will abide forever. And so I know the key phrase there that Peter's talking about it actually says the heavens uh, shall pass away with a great noise, but the word means to be discovered or loosed. It will be loosed. And, and when it says the elements shall be changed, in the New Testament, the word elements, the Greek word stoicheia, is used for a list of things, not like we call hydrogen and oxygen and that kind of thing. The word stoicheia is used in Galatians, where Paul rebukes him for trying to be saved by keeping law. In the book of Hebrews, where it's the ABCs of the gospel, okay, that's the way the word stoiche is used in the New Testament. Uh, And it goes on to say, everything on earth will be discovered. There will be a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. The key is there will be changes. It'll still be the earth, but the key thing is the the cosmos. Uh, The cosmos is a structured society. Uh, Others... It's an unfortunate thing. There's three words in the Greek New Testament, three separate words, all translated by world in your English Bible, world or earth. Uh, There is ge, G-E, that actually means the earth, the ball we live on. There is the cosmos, the cosmetic, the structured society. That's going to vanish away. That's going to be destroyed. There is the ion, the age. The age is going to be destroyed. But the earth, the ball, will still be here. So it's a new heaven and a new earth, the same one, but it's renewed. It uses the same word. Uh, 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 it says the former, earth, or the former heaven and earth were passed away. He uses the same verb that's used. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. The verb is par erkamai. Now, when you became a new creature, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Did you cease to exist or were you changed? You were changed. That's the same word used there. There's going to be dramatic changes, and we don't know what all they're going to be, but it will still be here. Amen. Eliminated. No. 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 The stoiche is going to be burned up, the ABCs, the culture. Okay? Yeah, I go into all this stuff in my book, but... (laughs) You better get the book. We'd be here all night. <laughs> uh, it's it's so rich and so good. It's easy to it, uh, and so I do encourage you to to get the book and read it and 
And watch Bible Answers when pastor is on each Sunday night that you're not in church. You better be in church. Yeah, you have church Sunday night. And we so, do. Uh, so um, when, you, when you can, uh, tune in and, and ask him uh, further questions. Isn't it wonderful to experience God's grace and His mercy? To see Him move in our services? I contend that those that come out on Sunday night, they're really driving hard to push in and find the very best from God. And so... He in no way disappointed us tonight. We're glad you joined. If you don't have a church home, please make New Life your church home. We look forward to having you with us. We love you. We thank you.